You get what I'm saying? So it's like, it was Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. They all have a part. So without the Holy Spirit, you can't even be risen from the dead. Jesus got risen because of the Holy Spirit. I'm reading from John chapter one. Which kind of translation? And we're going to be going through basically the whole chapter. Right, but you want New Living Translation, New King what, James? Well, they got it on the screen. Oh, so okay. if, if y'all don't have a Bible or everything's on the screen. So the beginning says, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. He existed in the beginning with God. God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. The word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the, the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created, but the world did not recognize him. He came to his own people, and even they rejected him. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn not with physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the Father's one and only Son. And I'm going to stop right there real quick and break everything down. And I don't know if you guys or Felicia will have some input on it, but and in John chapter one, it says the word already existed. It didn't say th the son already existed. It says the word. It didn't say Jesus already existed. It says the word already existed. So the in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was with God and the word was God. So we have the identity of the word. Uh, a lot of people go into the Hebrews and go lobos and all of that but i believe god gives understanding even through the normal way of our own english language and all of that stuff so so when it says in the beginning the word already existed the word was with god and the word was god so we have an identity of one of what people call the trinity but i call it just the truth right so the word was with god the word was God is giving you the, the identity of, of God. So there's more to learn. That's also what it's giving. There's more to learn. So it goes on to say he existed in the beginning with God, right? God created everything through him and nothing was created except through him. So now we have an identity called the word. We know that he is God and everything was existing because of him and everything exists through him so if the word wasn't alive wasn't true nothing would exist nothing would be held held together because this part of god holds everything together created everything and everything like that so this is the identity of god the word right so the word the word gave life to everything that was created and his life brought light to everyone. So now, not only did he exist from the beginning, not only is he God, not only did he create everything, right? Right. But he also give life. So the life everyone have is through the word, right? Not Jesus yet. See, she whispered Jesus, right? Not Jesus yet. This is through the word, right? This is through the word. This is not Jesus yet. Jesus is the human body, right? Uh -huh. The word decided to live in when he left heaven, right? So this is the beginning. So now we understand in the separation. It's still something together, but it's also, I don't know if y'all can see my hands, right? Y'all can see my hands, mm -hmm. right? There's also, there's something where the word and Jesus is together. It's the same, it's the same, one and the same, but it's also not. I don't know if... 
I'm going to explain it more, right? So not only did the word give life to everything, right, that was created, but he also gave light to everyone. This is why I don't know if you guys remember uh, later on in the book of John, uh, matter of fact, it was on the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus came saying, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. He was preaching this, right? So the word decided to live inside of a body called Jesus Christ and started to declare to the people that you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. If you guys also, I don't know if, well, if you guys also back it in the day in the Bible, in the uh, Old Testament, uh, God promised Abraham that he would have children as numerous as the salt of the sea. The salt of the sea is the salt of the earth, right? And you will have children as numerous as the stars in the sky. The stars in the sky is the light of the world. Y'all, y'all following? Mm -hmm. So the light shines. Uh, so, so this, the, the word give life and the word gives light to everyone. Right. Mm -hmm. So everyone automatically have light, have life and everyone should also have light. That's why a lot of people say, well, this person's a nice person, but they got their bad side, you know, because every, uh, or, or they say everyone, oh, this person like get on my nerves, but you know, they got their good side because everyone has that light in them from, from the word. When you was created, you was given life and you was given light. When, when Jesus came, his, his point was to take out that darkness. So the light could fully rule your life instead of the darkness. So there's no darkness that could creep in. That's why he said, if, if Jesus also said, if, if you have a lamp, do you put it in a basket or do you put it in the highest place of the house so that it could give light to the whole room? It's because Jesus wanted you to realize your identity and who you are and that you need to shine in this world. You need to stop hiding and letting the darkness rule you when you now have power to rule the darkness because no no darkness can overcome light light always shines in darkness and the darkness runs and hide in every corner where the light can't reach and god giving you light and, and showing you that you you are the light right and this is before he died when he was saying you are the salt of the world you are the light of the earth right so he wants you to know that you can shine your light anywhere and darkness will have to run away. So verse five, he goes on to say, the light shines in darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Basically what I was just saying, right? The light shines in darkness and darkness can never extinguish it. The, the, the devil, demons, whatever it is, they only can creep in and stay if there is no light in you. If you let the darkness rule you, you'll be overcome with darkness. That's why Jesus says the, the eyes are the lamp of the body. So uh, it, it goes on to say, God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. So now we have John the Baptist, a witness, right? Chosen before, before the foundation of the world because this is God's plan right? Chosen to testify about the light because everybody was walking in darkness. And everybody was walking in darkness because they felt like, all right, my friend's walking in darkness, my cousin's walking in darkness, and, and nothing's happening to them. You see what I'm saying? There's no punishment. So so that's how it trickles on, right? Like, uh, even with kids, like when one of my kids do something bad, you know, and nobody says that nothing to them and the other kid sees it then they do the same thing you see what i'm saying but when you discipline the first child from what they did wrong then the second child will see the or whoever looks or all, all the other kids whoever look they will see all right that's wrong so this is how god also operates um uh, verse six god sent man john the baptist to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony and i always highlight this to everyone that he said might mm -hmm. so you got to understand that jesus the word when he left his heavenly abode he left 
to die on the cross for our sins so that people might believe. That's right. So it wasn't even a hundred percent because everybody has a free will. Mm -hmm. So it was so it was for the hope that people might believe who he is and believe in him and come to salvation. So think about dying for somebody and hope that they would change and hope that they will believe and hope. You see what I'm saying? So everything that this Jesus came asking us to do, he already have done. And not only have he have done it, he was teaching us how to do it. So when Jesus came and he was walking, doing all these things, he was showing us also how to live in the flesh because he didn't have no, he didn't have nothing that he didn't give us to live this righteous life. Meaning everything that Jesus had when he walked the earth, we now have because we believe in Jesus. So he wasn't cheating. A lot of people out here, a lot of people say, oh, but that's Jesus. That's God. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you see what I'm saying? And that's not true. You see what I'm saying? In the sense that we can't also do it. What's the whole point of him coming to die if we can't be like him and live like him? When the whole time he was preaching, it was for us to be like him. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's a big thing also. Uh, verse 8, John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the light. The one who is the true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He came into the very world he created. But the world didn't recognize him. Right? He came to his own people and even they rejected him. But to all who believed, believed them, accepted him. And gave the right to become children of who? God. Of God, right? So when Jesus comes to you, right? Because Jesus comes to everybody. When Jesus comes to you, he's giving you an opportunity, right? So that they might believe, right? He's giving you an opportunity. Think about a lot of people say is once in a lifetime chance, one in a million, one in a billion. You see what I'm saying? He's giving you a, a, a opportunity to accept him, believe in him. And a lot of people don't appreciate that. You see what I'm saying? So it's like we have to like, for instance, like we have to understand the value that Jesus is bringing to us and we have to we have to understand the value in itself rather than what other people perceive that value is because there's different religions. Uh, there's different beliefs within religions and, but there's only one truth. So we have to understand the value. Like for instance, uh, like let's just say a Mona Lisa painting, right? Who, who says that that painting is so full of worth that, it needs to be in a museum. It needs to be locked up. It needs to be who is just a painting. I could paint a picture. Who cares if it's from this, whatever hundreds, whoever painted it, Picasso, who, I don't know. Right. But I'm just saying who puts the value man puts the value. You see what I'm saying? But we got to understand God put his own value there and we have to accept that value as what it is. We can't let other people water it down. Whether it's by how they live, what they say, other religions, theories. That's why Jesus also said, don't get into all that jitter jatter with other people about uh, uh, pedigrees or angels. And you see what I'm saying? All these heavenly things that they don't understand because they put their own value on something when we have to recognize the value God already set. And nobody would accept Jesus the way he is if they don't see the value that he already set there. You see what I'm saying? He put his own value. He put his own stamp on it. You see what I'm saying? It's like, like who says a Jaguar is more valuable than a Lexus or why? Because it go fast. They both do the same thing at the end of the day. You see what I'm saying? Who sets these values is man. So we have to understand God put his own stamp. He said, he's saying, I am God. I am the light of the world. I am, I am, I am. And we have to accept that instead of letting the other people put their fingers on it and say, ah, oh, well, you know what I mean? Uh, no, nah. because 
And I'm saying this because once you understand that value, you'll understand who you are and you'll understand your real value. And when darkness try to come in, you'll be like, who are you? You see what I'm saying? Why, why are you coming to me? You know who I am? You see what I'm saying? You got to talk like that. You see what I'm saying? Because in reality, this is your value. This is who you are. God tells us to be humble, but never, never disqualify the con confidence that you can have in Christ to be who Christ wanted you to be. You, we got to understand everyone who sent here was sent here for a purpose. And the only way we can fulfill that purpose if, is when Jesus comes to us and we accept right we accept that value so you got to remember so this is also the faith of god right everything was created through him so he created you on earth so that you might believe in him even though he had a plan for you from the beginning of the world you see what i'm saying so how, how can i put this let's say felicia right felicia you could say she didn't exist before this world was created Right. But God already pre-planned everything. Listen, I'm going to send you on this earth, you know what I mean, to do this, to do this, to do that. Right. So and she's all happy, like, yeah, when I get down there, Lord, find me. I'm going to believe in you. I'm going to do all of this. And how sad would it be if she made all these promises before she came in this human body, just like Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. Came in this human body and didn't fulfill everything she was saying. You see what I'm saying? So that's why you got to understand, even in Jeremiah, there's a deeper meaning when he says, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. There's a deeper meaning because wow. in, in, before God sends everybody to this earth, we had a conversation with God. You see what I'm saying? We had a conversation. We can't remember it, but we had a conversation with God. And when we sit here and God comes to us, you know what I mean? He's calling us, right? So that we might accept him to start the will that he had for us. So how sad would it be if now we're here and we say, uh, you know, what? Well, I really don't believe. You see what I'm saying? But you got to understand deep down, we know there's a light in us. Deep down, we know there's life in us. And we, deep down, we know who it's from. That's, right. That's why a lot of people, even atheists, they'll say, well, I, I, atheists will always say, well, I know there's a higher power. You yeah. see what I'm saying? All the time. They, they will always say that because deep down, they know that there's that life in them and they know that there's that light in them that that is unnatural to this world. Right. So but to all who believed in him, in him and accepted him, verse 12, he gave the right to become children of God. So now we have to understand. Being the child of God, right? This is that deep. We have to understand being the child of God because being the child of God is something more than just like being a child of Jerry or a child of Felicia. You know what I mean? It's the child of God. You got to understand, we just identified who the word is, right? So the word, so we're the child of, right? It says in verse three, uh, in the beginning, the word already existed. The word was God in verse one, the word was God. Now it's telling us in verse 12, we get we were given the opportunity to become children of God. Mm. So we're the children of somebody who's able to exist before the beginning, right? We're the children of somebody who's who's able to create. We're the child of somebody who's able to give life. We're the child of somebody who's able to give light. We're the child of somebody who, if we have light, darkness can never extinguish it. Mm. Right. You see what I'm saying? This is who we are. This is our power. This is, we're the child of that person. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Versus, uh, 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 I can say my kids, I'm the child of, or, or matter of fact, LeBron James. I'm the child of LeBron James. Who puts that value? Mm. Yeah. Who's LeBron? You see what I'm saying? Who's Michael Jordan? Who's Michael Jack? You see what I'm saying? Who are these people? They live, they die. That's right. right? But this man, right? This Ooh. God, yes. this God existed before the beginning. And we were given the opportunity to be his child. So you can't tell me, all right, LeBron James is a basketball player. The son is a basketball player. 
and he wants to live up to his dad's expectation, if not surpass it. But when we come to be the child of God, we don't even say, I want to try to surpass God. You know, mm. we don't even put it in a theory. I want to live up to my father so much. I want to try to surpass his goodness if it's possible. Mm. You see, we don't even say that. I want to be great. You see what I'm saying? People call it pride. I'm not saying exalt yourself above God. You see what I'm saying? I'm just saying in a sense, we don't, we don't even say to ourselves, I want to be just like my father. Nobody gets up and say, you see what I'm saying? I want to be just like my father. I want to be just like my, my dad. You see what I'm saying? We don't say that. We say, oh, no, my dad is far greater than me. I can never be like him. When mm. he's saying, no, you my child. Mm. Everything that I am, you. What did Jesus say? You will be holy like your father in heaven. Mm. Right? He, he yeah. said all these things for a reason because he's showing you who you are. Without knowing who you are, you can never succeed in being who you are. Unless you understand who Jesus is, who the word is, before he was Jesus, you will never understand the sacrifices he made. You will never understand uh, 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 what he brought you to be. You will never fully understand that because we we will always let the trickling down of other people's theories on what we believe put the value on the reality. And that's what's happening. That's how, that's how people basically drift away right mm -hmm. so people drift away the devil starts it from your problems uh your evil desires the devil starts it from what else i don't know if y'all know some things right i know it's from like issues when when you going through a problem and you in need the devil always comes he try to give you a shortcut he try to be the replacement of god but it always has a consequence mm -hmm. and then so it's what i, what I just said so it's the what did I just say? Problem, Your problems, temptation, depression, Everybody temptation, is. right? Your problems. Well, that's temptation. He mm -hmm. comes. The temptation comes when you have your problems. Depression. You depression. Yeah. Right. Basically, whenever you need, that's when the devil comes. Mm -hmm. But and sometimes God will let that happen. God will allow that temptation just to see how far you'll take it you see what i'm saying but he'll also he'll also fall back he'll be like all right this is how much you love me this is how much you love me right you you fought you fought only a little bit you see what i'm saying you fought only a little bit when he turned around he sacrificed himself every day he denied himself every day. His emotions, you got to think about his emotions. The Bible says Jesus' beard was plucked off of his face, mm. right? He was yeah. stripped. He was struck. He was whipped, right? With lead whip tips, you know what I mean? So all of these things, at any time, he could have said, I give up. But the Bible says he, he looked forward to the joy that you might believe in him. So we got to understand the value and you got to also understand this. We're so valuable. God is willing to shed his own blood. I don't have blood. You can say, all right, God don't have blood. But if he did, which he made himself have blood, we're so valuable to him that he will shed his blood for us. We're so valuable that he would die for us. We're so valuable that he'll become a man to die for us. This is how valuable we are to him. And you got to understand the devil knows our value also. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? That I believe a lot, a lot. The devil mo knows your value more than you know yourself. Mm -hmm. That's what I believe, because you got to understand that the same way we're precious to God, we're precious to the devil too. Because the difference between a lot of people don't know this. I'm, I'm going, but I, I'm gonna give scripture right. A lot of people don't know this that. We don't give God anything, right? There's nothing we could give God. Us being good, don't give God more power. Us worshiping him, don't give him more power. But every soul the devil gets, he gets more power. Yeah. Right? Every soul the devil gets, every bad thing he makes people do, he gains more power through this. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that. So we're more valuable. Be an angel at one point. Right? Yeah, yeah the, so the devil was an angel at one point. 
right? So uh, verse 13, they are reborn, not with physical birth resulting from human passion or plan. Understand that. This is so deep. They are reborn, not with physical birth. Yeah, yeah. Right? They are reborn, not with physical birth resulting in human passion or planning, right? But with what? Verse 13. But the birth, birth that comes from, from God. from God. Right? So, reborn, you got to understand that. So, now... We're not reborn physically, right? That's why uh, Nicodemus went to Jesus in, 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 in the garden and said, how can a man go into his mother's womb and be born a second time? Because he was thinking about physical reborn. Mm -hmm. And Jesus was explaining about a spiritual reborn, right? And we need this spiritual reborn uh, rebirth because... The, the way you live in this life, in this human body, affects your spirit. Mm -hmm. Let me rephrase that. Uh, that's why the Bible says that our hearts become stony. And he ends up giving us a heart of flesh. But really, it's a spiritual heart, right? Um, what, the, what else does it say? And Ezekiel says that he gives us a, a new spirit. And on top of that, the Holy Spirit, right? So the re reborn, I did a thing on YouTube where uh, I compared this rebirth. Like I said that it's not like you're going from a spiritually, it's not like you're going from a caterpillar to, the, to a butterfly. It's like this rebirth is like you are a new creature. So it's, think about going from a caterpillar to a lion. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So it's like this, this rebirth is a complete transformation. Yeah. You're nothing the way you was before. Mm -hmm. Nothing compared. Right? Because th this rebirth comes from God. Yes. Right? So now it goes on to say in verse 14, so the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. So now the Bible is identifying the word, right? Who who was the with word. God, who was God, was in the beginning, created everything. He came in a human body and he identified his character. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. We should be looking at these words and saying, this is me too. Mm -hmm. Unfailing love and faithfulness. And we got to realize, even a lot of Christians, I hear them say, like, man, I help so many people so much. I can't do it no more. But then they keep doing it. You know why you keep doing it? It's because of that unfailing love. Mm -hmm. It's deep within you. You see what I'm saying? You, your flesh don't want to do it because you see your physical needs. You see, man, I got to pay my own bills. But it's like, man, I can't. I got to give. It's that unfailing love that God placed in you. Mm -hmm. it's, and a lot of people don't understand it. So they get on Facebook. I hate it when I hate it when I look out for all these people, you see what I'm saying? But they was never there for me. It's because maybe they don't have what you have. You see what I'm saying? That unfailing love, that faithfulness. You see what I'm saying? So we gotta also understand and it's a lot of things that God placed in us. We living in it, but don't identify it or realize it. Mm -hmm. But it's really from God, right? So when we look at these words, everything that is saying about Jesus. We should be looking at this is me. Mm -hmm. This is my identity. Because the same way Jesus is the son of God, the same way I'm the son of God. The same way he, why do you think Jesus said to uh, the, the, sons, the sons of Zebedee when they said, who will be on your right and who will be on your left? And what did Jesus say to them? Would you guys drink from the same cup I drink from? And they say, yeah. And what did Jesus say? Surely you would drink from it, but I, I don't have I don't have the authority. That's already set. God already the God the Father. We gotta understand Jesus was talking as a human now. So he was when he was speaking God the Father, he was giving you the other identity. So Jesus came giving you the true identity of the Father. Right? So 
he was saying, you, uh, surely you would drink from the same cup that I drink from, the cup of suffering. Mm -hmm. So the same way, the same way Jesus uh, was living, basically, we can live it too. And the, the same suffering that he suffered, we're going to have to suffer. Jesus also said, if the teacher suffers, how much more will the, the students. students? And he said, if they call me the prince of demons, mm. what more names will they call you? Amen. So we got to understand that when we are the, this is part of the darkness trying to extinguish the light. Right? We are the light. So automatically you have an enemy. Friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God. So how much more will friendship with God make you an enemy of the world? So mm -hmm. when 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 people when people is trying to come against you, trying to water down, trying to change your mindset, these are all darkness trying to extinguish your light. Basically, try to compress you, like so you don't speak out about your faith. Uh, do good things you see what i'm saying that's all part of the attack of darkness trying to extinguish or uh, uh your light that god placed in you i don't know if that sums it down or whatever the case is like people trying to influence you to do things that you wouldn't usually do oh <laughs> killers of it. yeah so people <laughs> trying to influence you into things that you don't want to do right that's 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 part of the darkness trying to extinguish because you got to understand you got to understand this too because these people suppose you walk in the light you know the truth you know jesus you came to believe it you came and confess out your mouth you surrender your life right so he can take over and somebody else never did that and if they can their darkness that's what they understand they don't understand you yet so they need you to help them understand the light they don't understand it yet. Maybe God want to use you. So you got to understand when they come into you and their darkness starts to overcome you. Mm. They they could walk free, but God is going to hold you accountable because God is saying they never they never knew. But I taught you. Mm. You felt my spirit. You felt the Holy Ghost. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you felt who I am and you know who I am. And you still let that overcome you. So mind you, years can go by, they can get saved and God will forget and forgive everything they did when they was in that darkness, just like he forgave and for, forgot about yours when you was in darkness. But there's no excuse now that you're in light. The Bible says if you continually, uh, uh, how can I put it? If you continue to, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember. If you continue deliberately, if you deliberately keep on sinning, there is no sacrifice left for sin. What does that mean? If you keep sinning, knowing the truth, who is who else is there to die for you? There's no, there's not another cross. You see what I'm saying? So you were, you were when you was baptized into Christ spiritually, you was baptized into that one man who's the only person where you can be saved. So if you keep doing it, there's not somebody else you could get saved through. That's why a lot of people, when they start to sin, they start to go other places. And they start to feel like God will never accept them. Kind of like the prodigal son. You see what I'm saying? But God will accept you back. You see what I'm saying? But it's like, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's like, all right, but you, you within yourself will feel this. Who's going to forgive me? I can't hear you. No, I said it's a mind thing. It's like a mental exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's why the Bible also says, renew your mind. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed. The only way you can be transformed into who you are, the children of God, is if you renew your mind. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you got to renew your mind to know who you are. So with Caleb, going, going back to what Caleb was saying, these people that influence you, they may not believe. You see what I'm saying? Or, or God will be using them to try to influence you so you could come back with the word of God. Because that's what happened when the devil tried. You got to understand also, it's, it's all a big like kind of circle because when the devil, you got to understand the Holy Spirit led Jesus to be tempted by the devil. Right. 
It wasn't just the devil's own working. The Holy Spirit led him. So how much more will God lead us also into these temptations? Even in the even in the model prayer, it says, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from who? The evil one. That's in our prayer. So God can lead us into temptation also. Even Jesus was led into temptation. But when he's leading you, he's he's he done already showed you how to fight it. So when he's leading, mind you, Jesus had to learn who he is spiritually, just like we do. Y'all understand? He didn't just wake up. I'm the son of God. No, you see what I'm saying? I'm the word of God. I created all of it. He didn't just wake up like that. God, the father had to come to him little by little, like he's been coming to us. You see what I'm saying? And the, these prophecies, the God, the father had to teach him about. This is him. You see what I'm saying? Because he came as a man, he came not remembering nothing that was from heaven. So the father had to teach him who he is. That's why even uh, when he was 12, that's when the Bible states that it started. Uh, when he was uh, when he was speaking with the, uh, the the teachers of religious law and he said to his mom when they was looking for him, didn't you know I, was, I would be about my father's business? So that that threw Mary off. The Bible says Mary kept that in her heart because that threw Mary off because she realized now he's calling God, the father, his father and not Joseph. So he's starting to understand who he is spiritually who he really is. Remember, Mary and Joseph always knew. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand is Jesus went through, I'm trying to help you guys understand Jesus when he separated himself from being the word to come into this human body called Jesus. He, he, he dealt with the same thing we dealing with right now. That's why he's able to help us. That's why he's, he's our high priest. Basically able to enter into uh intermediate for us in prayer and all these things he's like our lawyer you see what i'm saying because he dealt well he knows the mental games he knows all of that but going back to he was led into temptation and he beat it with the the word of god he didn't have no no other secret power that only god has he had the holy spirit and he had the word of god every attack so you got to understand so when the devil came at the last part and says I will give you all these kingdoms if you bow down and worship me. When Jesus denied that, he denied that knowing who he is, right? But he also became Jesus Christ. Remember, the word of God was already head of everything. But now as a man, he overcame that too because in the book of Revelation at the end, Jesus Christ was given all authority in heaven and on earth. So the devil tried to give Jesus authority of, over the kingdoms of this earth. That's the only power he has. But God, the father through Jesus, uh, y'all understanding where I'm coming from? The separation. Yeah. The word of God always had the authority, but mm -hmm. he started when he became a human being called Jesus. Right. So when he overcame the devil's temptation saying, if you worship me, I would give you all the kingdoms of the world. When he denied that, he was looking to something greater, which he later became as Jesus. So he also has authority as the word and he has authority inside the human body called Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that he has authority. The father gave Jesus Christ authority over the world and over the heavens. You got to understand that. So when you deny the temptation of the devil, right? The devil won't come and say, oh, if you bow down and worship me, he'll never he'll never come to you like that. He'll come in a like an angel of light. Or oh, if you just do this, you'll get all of this. He won't make it blatantly. All right, if you just bow down and worship me because he know you won't. A lot of people. A lot of people. Don't know they serving the devil because it's not plain in sight. You see what I'm saying? So he uses it in a different way. You see what I'm saying? Uh, uh, like the Bible says, you're a slave to whatever controls you. Okay. So whatever controls you, you're worshiping. It. That's your God. That's your idol. You're making it your idol. So the devil's happy with that. And he'll give you whatever you need. You see what I'm saying? Whatever you want. It's, n it's not no contract, yeah. but he'll give you whatever you need, whatever you want. Because you're basically worshiping and serving him. You're taking away 
the value that God has for you and replacing it with whatever the Lord is, is giving you. I don't think they seen somebody in the chat. Say that again. No, I said, I don't know if you guys seen, but somebody wrote in the chat. Oh, let me see. Uh, can y'all hear me? Yeah, I can yeah. hear you. Okay, so I just want to say something as well, because um, a lot of people don't realize that the the, the uh, an angel at one point. Yep. And, and he went against God's um, will and, and what he had for him. And so... Um, they they made a contract with each other and he told him that he was going to put him as a fallen angel and that you know he can have anything that he can have without touching his children that's and, mm -hmm. and and with that with that being said he said you know i'm going to see who follows you in my name because if they're of me, they're not going to follow you. So sometimes when we when we when we go astray and when we fall short of the glory, you know that's when we allow the enemy to attack us. You know, and a lot of times it comes in the form of our family members. It can be our mothers. It can be our fathers. It can be anybody around us. You know, and sometimes we think that it's coming from a good place, or you know, they're just trying to be hard. But a lot of times, you know, we're not realizing that we're surrounding ourselves around. Um, the enemy and the enemy's angels and it's bringing us down in a place that we shouldn't be and sometimes you know even when we know the word and we're strong in the word sometimes we have to separate ourselves from the the, the demonic world mm -hmm. as they would say and, and allow God to step in and do what he has to do because at the end of the day when we are of God's children we are accountable for what we do know and we are held accountable for like for what we need to give out there in the world. But he also says, you know, once you put it out there and you give it to them, if they don't receive it, you know, it's still your job to try to help them to receive it. But at sometimes you have to separate yourself because you don't want to exhaust yourself with all that negative energy coming your way when you're trying to be the light of other people that need it as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of that is true, but the the beginning part that the so. The, the devil, the devil wasn't an angel. His name was Lucifer, right? Basically. And he rebelled against God and he was kicked out of heaven. Mm -hmm. God didn't need to make a contract with him. You see what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So he took the contract within himself to be controlling of the darkness. You see what I'm saying? He took that authority within himself because even though God has authority over everything, you see what I'm saying? But you got to understand everything that the devil has was created by God. You see what I'm saying? So whether it's hell, hell was created by God. You see what I'm saying? Thrones, dominions, all of these things was created by God and for him. Everything is for God. You see what I'm saying? The like, for instance, this world is for this world is for God. This, this house, you, the houses you live in, everything is God's. We take control of it. We say, hey, I'm going to take control and make it into bricks and i'm gonna make a house but everything belongs to god he can say listen i'll make this house fall you see what i'm saying everything belongs to god we just we just take control of things because the authority that god allows us to have wherever it don't work wherever things are uh, uh hindered then we be like all right i'm not gonna do this no more you see what i'm saying and think about it think about you putting stuff together to build a house and the house keep falling you be like all right maybe god don't right know. you see what i'm saying but everything belongs to god everything that's why when i went back to say the devil tried to tempt jesus but he was led by the holy spirit to be tempted and the devil found his opportunity when he needed food you see what i'm saying when he was looking for food his fasting was done you see what i'm saying so it's God don't need the devil making me like mess up. <laughs> God don't need the devil. God is using the devil. You see what I'm saying? So God is using the devil to see to see who the who the wheats and the tears are. So that's basically what I said in the beginning. Like it's, yeah, it's, but there's no contract. There's no contract. It's, 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 I said contract, yeah. but you know it's it's all in that in that line. Yeah. You know, he he wants to see who will follow him and like and he said wouldn't. in his word my children won't depart from me uh-huh you know what i'm saying so let's see who you can who you can who you can 
get to follow you, but you cannot touch none of my children. Mm-hmm. Right, and that's why that's why God gives you a choice. God gives you freedom. He, he wants to see how your heart is by yourself without Him trying to lead you to everything. He knows. God knows that God. That's why God gives you choices. He either decide what you want to do for yourself, and that's why the devil's there. Either going to go with God, you going to be for the devil. It's your own choice. But yeah. I always, um, when I'm talking to people, I always tell them about the um, the Wizard of Oz, mm-hmm. the, the yellow brick road. Mm-hmm. And I use that as, as an example, you know, because throughout the movie, you know, they're trying their best to get to a destination, you know, to get out this world, to get out whatever it was at, you know, and, through, and, and throughout the movie, she's being tempted by so many different characters that's coming in. And I was like, that's, that's us in life, you know. When we're a child of God and we're walking through, you know, through through what where it is we need to walk through when it comes to God, we have all these temptations coming at us left and right. And that's just the enemy trying to take us off of what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And then is uh, another thing is like when people say you use a scripture of everyone has fallen short of the glory of God. That's in Romans. So what happens? Bella, I'm gonna answer your question. Just yeah, I'm gonna answer Bella. What happened when with that scripture, if people read it, God was saying when we was born, we was born into sin because of Adam and Eve. So when we gave our life to Jesus Christ, we can't say it's because we have fallen short of the glory of God. God is letting us know before we were saved, that's what we did. So that scripture don't pertain to the way we live after we accept our, accept Jesus Christ. So when they say we have fallen short of the glory of God, if you read Romans 8, it's in there. But they're telling us who we are before we became with Christ, like before we gave our life with Christ. So people say, oh, if the Bible tells us we fall short of the glory of God, so that's why we sin. No, that's not why we sin. Because God told us who he was in the beginning, but once we gave our life to Christ, that separated us from doing those things. So now it's just the will that we do. It's not because we was born to do that. No, now we know the truth, so we can't use that scripture as the reason why we sin. And and we got to understand, God, God has patience with us. We got to understand when... Like when the Bible's telling us to have allowance for other people's sins, like if they do something wrong to us, like give them allowance, like let them slide with certain, you see what I'm saying? That means that God does the same thing with us. Meaning like if you just got saved, you got to understand some people get saved when they 60, Mm -hmm. 50, 40, 30. Some people get saved young, but you got to understand you was living a life of habit. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Even though everything in you might be changed, you have a habit of doing things. You see what I'm saying? Of a physical habit of doing things. And God wants you to change your mind. You don't need this habit. You see what I'm saying? You don't need to keep doing this. You, you change now. So what, what God is doing, he's trying to, he wants you to understand who you are spiritually. So when you fall into these habits, you'd be like, hold on. I'm the child of God. I shouldn't be doing this. You see what I'm saying? Because you'll know that you're too big for this. You'll know that your purpose is too much for this. You see what I'm saying? You got a bigger calling and and something more valuable is at stake. You see what I'm saying? So God has allowance where people say, he doesn't just say, all right, because I sinned, because you sinned. So a lot of that goes to a lot of other Christians drift away too and say, oh, you did this judgmental and stuff. You got to understand when Jesus was was training his his disciples, they were sinning. And Jesus would correct them. You see what I'm saying? He wouldn't just, he wouldn't just be like, all right, stop following me. You see what I'm saying? He would correct them. And when other people would come in, like the Pharisees, the religious people, and try to say stuff to him, like try to judge them because they was eating food on the Sabbath, they was harvesting wheat, Jesus would step in. He wouldn't even let his disciples answer on their own. Nowhere in the Bible, because he was their teacher, he was their leader. You see what I'm saying? So he would never let them answer these religious people on their own. He would do it for them. He would be like, all right, how many of you, if your cow fell in the ditch, wouldn't do it on the Sabbath? If your, if your cow fell on the Sabbath, you wouldn't, you wouldn't work to get your own cow or your, you see what I'm saying, to get it out of a hole so it don't die? So Jesus was explaining that the Sabbath, he's, he's the God of the Sabbath. He controls it. So if Jesus Christ, right, is the, he said the son, mind you, he didn't say, he said the son of man is ruler also over the Sabbath. So this is us too. So he also went on to say, he also went on to say that it's always 
it's always the Sabbath was not made for man, but uh, uh, the Sabbath was was made for man, not man made for the Sabbath. Meaning that day of rest was made for us. We wasn't made to follow it like a rule to be on our backs and stuff like that. He also explained. He also explained that. Uh, dang, what what did he also explain? So he he explained that it was made for us, not us for it. That he was ruler over the Sabbath, which goes to us also. And there was one more thing. Sheesh. Uh, it was right on the tip of my, my brain. Uh, uh, that he was ruler over the Sabbath also. Oh, and it's also to do good on the Sabbath. The Sabbath was made as a day, basically, so people could rest. Because at that at their time, God wasn't basically living in them so now we have the light living in us we have the holy spirit they were the bible said the reason for that though is because when uh god created man and then on the seventh day he rested rested. so that's what the jewish belief was yeah but all about their their teaching was that you can't do nothing you can't do nothing because if you end up doing something you might sin so just stay at home sit down you see what i'm saying but if god changed us and we have dominion over darkness. Darkness shall have no dominion over us. The whole point of the Sabbath is basically the, the book of Hebrews talks about it. It's basically so that we can do good on that day. But now that Jesus matters. called us every day. We have to be good. So that day is like every other day. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So let's answer because this is a good. All question. right. So this is a good question from Bella. One misunderstanding that I have is thinking God is Jesus, but in human form. I know God purposely sent Jesus on earth, but has, but was he, was he his own person or God himself, but in human form? All right, no, wait. So, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So I'm going to go back to the, the, the beginning. Uh, if, hold on, let me uh, pull it up for you. In John chapter, because this explained it the most, and I'll throw up another scripture. Let me know if y'all can see that. Yeah, because mm-hmm. I can't see the chat no more once I put this up. Yeah, but I'm trying to figure out what did she say again so I can. No, no. First, I want to answer that part. Oh, OK. So she's trying to understand how that operate as God is God also being Jesus and Jesus being God. And OK, yeah, how he sent him. Mm-hmm. So if you read right here in, in, in the beginning, the word existed. Right, Bella, the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning, the word existed. The word was with God and the word was God. So Jesus Christ, that name was given to a human body. Right. Meaning God with us. Remember, Jesus, the human body didn't come from a human father. It came from a spiritual father. And the spirit with inside of it was called the word when it left heaven to live in a human body that says right here in verse 14. So the word became human and made his home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen his glory, the glory of the father's one and only son. Right. So the word that, that, that being right, that spiritual being left heaven, right? Because it says right here, the word was with God and the word was God. So we know that God is a title because he was with God, right? The word God is a title like a uh, president or, or, uh, how can I put this? Uh, what's the title? Like, uh, you could say a business, but within a the business, there's, there's leaders inside of it. So we know God always identified three, three beings with being within this council called God. And each of them by themselves could call themselves like Jesus said uh, in the Bible says, I alone am God. He himself, he could say that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Because of what he overcame. Remember, it's Jesus Christ saying that I alone am God. You you understand? So Jesus himself could say it. The father himself could say it. The Holy Spirit can say I alone am God because they all operate under the same council, the same authority the same uh right. Trinity. Will, the same will and that's what jesus wants us to have as a church as believers he wants us to operate the same way he he does the same will 
basically the same way his disciples. He taught his disciples. So going back to, to the word, it says the word was with God and the word was God and the word became flesh. So the being left heaven, prepared a human body. The father, the Jesus said, uh, 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 thank you for the body. Basically, you prepared for me to sacrifice for the world. Right. So the body was prepared. It was born from a virgin mother and no father, no human father. And the, the God, the word entered that body. Right. And we know him as Jesus Christ. And we know that as the son of God, the one and only son, the firstborn from the dead. So it says he came into the very world he created. So in reality, you can say Jesus created the world. You see what I'm saying? In reality, you can say Jesus, Jesus give, gave life to everything and brought light to everyone. Right. So it's the same. So the word is Jesus. Jesus is the word, but it's separate also. You see what I'm saying? It's the same being living inside of that body. You see what I'm saying? It's just like Bella, like you have a spirit living inside of your body. And when your body, your human body dies, you still have a spirit Absolutely. and a soul. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And that Great. spirit, if you believe in Jesus you, you and you die, the Bible says that you will get a uncorruptible body a new body, a glorious body that will be able to live in heaven. But if you don't believe in Jesus or you fall into the traps of the devil and you die, you'll get a corruptible body. You got to understand. So Jesus is also creating bodies for eternal punishment or eternal life. So your, 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 the body that you will receive will will feel 10 times more than this physical body like the human the 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 spiritual bodies we're going to receive going to heaven won't be susceptible to temptation because temptation is in this human body right sin is in the only only in the flesh that's why jesus became flesh to overcome overcome flesh the power that sin had over flesh that's what the bible says in the book of colossians Right, so, so I don't know if that hold on, let's see. okay, but does anybody else have and, an explanation they could give her? And hold on, hold on. I also heard he used to be God's favorite, but he got jealous of God. Oh, the, you're talking about the devil. Yeah, he the Bible says that God has no favoritism. So I wouldn't call him his you gotta understand. So God God said he can make children of Abraham from these very stones. So the 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 titles people have or even spiritual beings is what god wants you see what i'm saying is what he <laughs> out of his own will it's not like he's better like for instance if like god called me to be a pastor god could have called you to 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 do anything else it doesn't mean that i'm greater than you i'm better than you so the position that the devil had it was just a greater position but he wasn't better than anybody else in heaven you see what i'm saying so what god Devil, I think the devil thought he was better than God. Yep. Yeah, the devil thought he was better than God. He had pride. So he saw so the Bible says that he he looked at himself at all the good things God did for him. Mind you, he didn't have to earn it. You see what I'm saying? God dressed him up in jewels, gave him all these instruments, and made him radiate so much glory of God than any other angel. So he thought he could be like God and said, I will exalt myself above God and everything like that. And that's when the war broke out and all that stuff. And a third of the angels went with him because he was a he was a cherubim. A cherubim is in charge of other angels. It's like, you see what I'm saying? Just like a pastor is in charge of people within the church. You see what I'm saying? So it was something like that. And then I always try to use like, to be a, have an understanding that's like if jerry has a child and his child is born how do you know that's his child because of dna so if jesus came from god he has god dna that make him god mm -hmm. because that's the only one that actually physically came into this world through the word of god which is jesus we came by god in the beginning uh breathing into adam's nostril and giving him a living soul 
So the actual spirit came from within God himself and which is Jesus Christ. So that's like if Jerry have a kid, that kid would have his DNA. Jesus have God straight DNA because the father is God. So it makes them part, but they're separate beings. I mean, like they all have their own purpose. So in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word became flesh, right? And dwelt among us. So in the beginning was the father. And remember in the beginning before uh the earth was created the holy spirit was hovering over the earth remember that so that's all three so you got the word which comes out of god's mouth which is jesus when it speak it gives life it, it does things it create things and what's crazy is what was jesus when he was in this world he was a carpenter a carpenter is somebody who make things you get what i'm saying so it's like it was jesus the father and the holy spirit they all have a part so without the holy spirit you can't even be risen from the dead jesus got risen because of the holy spirit so it's Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and the Father. That's how we bring it in. Amen. And we got to understand a lot of us, a lot of people don't know what they're supposed to be doing when they become a Christian. God, a lot of people don't realize that God. All right. So God will always have you doing even before you save, you'll always in some way be doing what he called you to be. Yeah. Like when he called his disciples, they were all fishers. Mm -hmm. So he said, he went He went to them and said, I will make you fishers of men. You see what I'm saying? So they, they know how to catch fish. It's like, now I'm going to teach you how to catch humans. You got to understand mm -hmm. that. So Jesus, he was a carpenter, like she said, and he created things, right? He was the creator of the world. You see what I'm saying? So it's like you'll always be doing in some way a piece of what your calling is, whether it's your job or whatever the case is. In some way, God will have you doing or have been doing what your true calling is. So, uh, so we're going to go to, I think, we're going to go to like nine. So I don't know if y'all got time. Y'all want to finish this chapter or y'all want to? I'm here. Okay, so yeah, yeah, here, everybody here. I'm here. All right, all right. Um, amen to that. But anybody has any other input? Because it's yeah. always good to have like the whole body, you know what I mean, kind of explain because God gives everybody a piece of information differently. Uh -huh. That's how I feel, but it all connected. So if anybody got any input about like the Trinity or the uh, God, the Father, the Son, or no, I'm 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 just gonna be very honest. Uh huh. I, I'm going to be very honest. I, I've been in church for like, a, a, I put myself in church as a child mm -hmm. because I, that was like the most safest place for me when I was a child. And I didn't understand the, the son, the father, the mm -hmm. Holy Ghost. I didn't understand none of that. And I don't think, I don't think I really cared. Yeah. I don't think I really mm -hmm. cared. And, and as I get older mm -hmm. and the churches that I have been to, nobody has really ever been able to give me a solid answer for mm -hmm. that. And, I still don't really care, and, and, I, and this is not to downplay any situation. Mm -hmm. I really still don't care because at the end of the day, I know that there's a higher power. I know that, like, when I do things, even to this day, um, if I do something that's not right, I get condemned for it. Mm -hmm. So I do know that the Holy Spirit is speaking to me. Mm -hmm. I just never understood that whole three parts of it. And to be quite honest with you, I still don't really understand that whole three parts of it uh, and I don't, I don't know if it's I don't know I can't say it it's because that people are not telling me right I just think that my mind is not set on that I just feel like my mind is more set on I know that there's a higher being and that higher being is what keeps me going on a daily basis even when I am doing wrong because it, because it condemns me it does it condemns me all right it so that th there's a big thing to that though mm -hmm. all right so the first part is this the Holy Spirit automatic, automatic. The Holy Spirit's job is to convict the world of their sin. So if it come, if you feel a conviction, whether you're saved or not, that happens to everybody, right? That because that's the Holy Spirit's job to conv convict the world of its sin, right? So if you're in the world, the Holy Spirit is gonna let you know you're not living right. If you're in Christ, living in the world, the Holy Spirit is gonna let you know you're not living right. So the whole point of this being in the Bible. Is to teach us the three parts. You see what I'm saying? It's to teach us God. Because in the beginning, what I said, I said that unless you know who God is, you will never understand or be able to live out your Christian life the right way where you're not sinning. 
You see what I'm saying? So that's the whole point of reading this. You have to understand. You have to be willing. And you have to care because it's not like you got to understand. Like I said, even earlier, that atheists believe there's a higher power. The devil believes there's a higher power, but he's still doing what he's doing. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, so, I know, like, I know, I know, the, I know the three parts of it. Mm -hmm. I do know, and I respect the three parts. I mm -hmm. just feel like my brain, like, because I know God, it's not a big, like, you know, people. Yeah, but it is, it's a very, this is the thing. It's a very big deal. It's a very, very big deal. And that's the, the, the problem is that a lot of, a lot of people don't teach it because they don't understand it. But it is a very big deal, like understanding who God, because that's God. It's not just the understanding of who Jesus is. You also got to understand the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you don't understand the Holy Spirit, then you'll never even understand the power and the gifts that God has given you. You see what I'm saying? Because the Holy Spirit's job is not Jesus' job to give you the gifts of the Holy, the gifts that the gifts that Jesus had. It was from the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit is in charge of distributing these gifts. It's not the Father's job. It's not Jesus' job. It's the Holy Spirit's job to distribute these gifts. So if you don't understand the Holy Spirit and how He operates, and I'll pull up that I'll pull up the scripture right now of the Holy Spirit. Uh, First Corinthians chapter twelve, eleven. So let me go to the scripture because I, I don't just, I want to teach and I don't want to just talk and make y'all say, all right, you're saying off of my word. You see what I'm saying? I want to show you guys. So first uh, Corinthians chapter 12, I'm going to go to it. I'm sorry. Verse 11. All right. So it says right here. It is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. One body, many parts. You see what I'm saying? So if, if we don't understand the Holy Spirit, we, like how many of us knew that? You see what I'm saying? That. You I see? So, you, so this goes to show you need to understand God and his fullness to understand who you are. And you, you, like you even kept on saying, like, even when I keep sinning, he still, God wants you to, to bring you to a place where you're not sinning at all. You remember Jesus said he's coming for a bride without a spot, blemish, or even a wrinkle. So that's high expectations. So that goes to show even when I was talking earlier, like who puts the stamp on these things to make it valuable? You see what I'm saying? So God, he said, listen, I give you, I gave you enough information. I gave you enough materials i gave you enough resources to live up to my standards mm -hmm. people don't understand god is real merciful compassionate and caring but at the same time he's harsh you see what i'm saying i don't know if i explained that right he's harsh to the people that that don't like the bible says people die because of the lack of knowledge people perish because of the lack of knowledge you see what I'm saying? Like, we have to understand the fullness of God and the Holy Spirit is part of it. The Father is part of it. You see what I'm saying? So the Father, the Father plays a big part in all of this. You see what I'm saying? But and, go ahead. And another reason why is because you have to explain to people why you believe in that faith that you have in. So if you're exactly. out of this world and you can't even tell the principle or why you believe and they come to you all right well this is what your bible say explain this to me you got to be able to explain this to people this to people about your faith you know what i'm saying so it actually helps you to understand actually better because i'm gonna tell you something you're going to go out in this world when god feel like he's ready for you and you're going to be put in a position and i guarantee you're going to put on a position where you're going to have to know these things that you got to explain it to these people but i know because my husband did it with me. Like I used to be the same way. And I said, I don't understand it. It's not clear to me. Then I, I pray for understanding. I read the Bible now and now I have an understanding, you know? So it's like, you got to pray for it. And then certain, certain like, even when you speak these things, you got to be careful because, you know what I'm saying? It's like, oh, I, I, I don't understand, but I want to know. You know what I'm saying? So it's right. like, it's just for your help. When you, when God send you out with these wolves, you got to explain why you believe in this faith. And that's all part of believing in the Trinity and stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if y'all want to read this little part real quick since it all combines together 
uh i'll start reading with the the like the holy spirit because uh i want people to understand you see what i'm saying and when you're trying to understand knock out the physical the physical stuff that you know about this life you have to try to just believe spiritually and then god will give you to understand it like uh, all right so so we know there's a father we know there's a council of god right we know there's a council of god we know part of it was the word and the word became jesus christ so a lot of people is confused all right if there's only one god people don't realize even though there's three beings that equal the council of god there is still only one god because there's only one god he so it's the father the word and the holy spirit we know that the word became human and dwelt among us to die on the cross for our sins right so we know that the father and the holy spirit is left right so the father is the one who sent jesus and prepared the body and everything like that and we know even in mary the holy spirit the bible says when mary believed right the angel the holy spirit overshadowed her so when the holy spirit overshadowed her she was given life of this body so we under, we start to understand that even in the beginning the bible says the spirit of god was hovering over the waters and god said let there be light and there was light so the holy spirit was hovering over the face of the waters right so the holy spirit had the will you see what i'm saying the holy identified the holy spirit was there first right the holy right. spirit had the will to want to create life so god the father identified that because they all work together and he said let there be light and who created these things it was the word of god when the father was speaking it was the word so regardless whether jesus came from heaven and became a human as a and he was known as the son even coming from the the, the mouth from inside of the father he was still living he was still the word he was still considered really the son of god because he came from his mouth he came from within him right and our children come from within us so god laid all these things out to help us understand him better because these we got to understand we're trying to understand spiritual things right it's not easy you know what i mean it's not easy but we we have to understand we have that part a lot of it is faith we just got to believe that's a lot of it right so so we have the the father let there be light the bible says the word of god created everything right in another place in the bible says that jesus created everything in the seen world and the unseen so even before he created the earth the stars all of these things he created the heavens he created his own throne all through speaking right and that was jesus christ doing it so, so that's why the bible says the word is active and alive and sharper than any double-edged sword it divides spiritual dividing even the bones and marrow right and it's intense is to challenge the thoughts of every man so that exalts itself above god so the word of god is here to is to challenge your thoughts that ex exalt itself above god in any way the, the word of god is here to correct you basically that's what it's trying to say so so here in verse four if everybody could see the screen right everybody can see the screen I'm sorry. It says there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. So just be so it's already telling you just because there are a whole bunch of spiritual gifts. It doesn't mean it's different spirits. There's only one spirit. Mm -hmm. So you can't say I'm going to a palm reader because, oh, how are they able to see into the future? You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because that's a that's a gift mm -hmm. if you look at it, but it's not from God. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So there's the, there's the, but the same spirit is the source of them all. So there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. So you don't have to go anywhere else to get spiritual gifts. You don't need to go see a medium, palm reader. You don't need to, you don't, you don't need none of that. You don't need to go if it, if it doesn't have God, that's why you need to understand God, too, because if you don't understand God, you might end up going somewhere that is not God. You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand the Holy Spirit. It is very vital to understand the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit 
is the source. That's why I said when Jesus came into this world as a human, he didn't have nothing special. So when he was walking sinless, he didn't have nothing we don't have right now. All he had was the Holy Spirit. He had the Father backing him. Right? We have something even more because we got we got we got the Father, we got Jesus who used to live in this world having compassion on us because he understand. You got to understand when Jesus was walking this earth, the Father was more strict with Jesus. Mhm. Mm you got to understand the father never came to live in this world. You got to understand. This is why Jesus was walking. He, he was sinless. He's God. He wasn't going to do nothing, but it was like, I don't understand. I don't know how to explain it, but when Jesus was walking this earth, it's better for us. I'll put it like that. It's better for us walking this earth because we have Jesus who used to, who, who felt the, 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 the harshness, the, the attitudes, the all of that stuff. He he felt all of these things in a physical form. You understand? So that's another reason why the Bible says that he is there to help us in our time of need. It doesn't say the Father, it says Jesus. You see what I'm saying? Because Jesus understands and Jesus began to teach us about the Father by saying the Father also loves you. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I and the Father are one. If you see me, you see the Father because we walk in the same footsteps. We do the same things. I only do what the Father tells me. So I'm not, even before he became Jesus, he was doing everything the Father said. You see what I'm saying? So he was just living out everything. You got to understand that. So, so we know that there is one spirit that distributes different kinds of spiritual gifts, Right? There's not just one spiritual gifts. There's a whole bunch, right? There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord, right? Mm -hmm. So there's different things to do within the kingdom of God, but we serve only the one God in the Lord Jesus Christ, right? God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us, right? Mm -hmm. A spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. So why are the spiritual gifts given? So we can help each other. So we can help each other. Not to help God. We don't have, there's nothing we can do. I'm going to save that for another day. But the, in the book of Job, it is a young man named Elihu, right? Who explained these things, right? But there's nothing we can do that can benefit God or take away from God. These spiritual gifts are for the ministering of each other. So uh, a lot of times when we angry with people, we say, listen, I'm going to go to God. And, you see what I'm saying? But it's, God gave you spiritual gifts to handle that. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. To one person, the spirit gives the ability to give wise advice. To another, the same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. I'm going to stop there because that's deep because special knowledge is called the word of knowledge. I've operated in, in these things. Right. And wise advice. <laughs> I've operated in these things right or wrong. Right. So the spirit is saying this, the one spirit gives the ability to give wise advice to another. The same spirit gives a message of special knowledge. The same spirit gives great faith to another. You ever met somebody who got so much faith? You like, dang, and it and it starts to give you faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You like, yo, if they got faith, look at their situation. Yeah. They got faith, shoot. You know, it's because the spiritual gifts is for each other, mm -hmm. and this also goes to show that we need each other. Yeah. I need your spiritual gift. You need my spiritual gift. We need each other. We need each other to grow, to become what god called us to be this new creature in christ mm -hmm. we need it we needed to learn we needed to build up we needed to help right um to another uh so one person the spirit gives the ability to give otherwise i've already read that all right the same spirit gives great faith to another and to someone else the one spirit gives the gift of healing right so now you know you can heal mm -hmm. right 
He gives one person the power to perform miracles and another the ability to prophesy. He gives someone else the ability to, uh, ability to discern whether the message is from the spirit of God or from the another spirit. So you, you may be telling somebody, it may be times you telling somebody a story of how you met somebody and they told you these spiritual things. And that person you tell them might be like, that's not from God. You got to listen to them. Right. Because yeah. if they telling you this is a spiritual gift, mm -hmm. this you you and a lot of people I hear this a lot of times because a lot of people used to do this to me as a pastor. They'd be like, well, I went to this church and they told me this. Yeah. I'm like, listen, that's not from God. That's and they'd be like, well, I'm going to go pray about it. You don't have to because the Holy Spirit. I just showed you scriptures <laughs> that everything that that person told you is wrong. And I got the Holy Spirit use the ability of the Holy Spirit is in me telling you what's wrong. And you still going to go to God, you ain't going to hear from God. Mm. You see what I'm saying? You ain't going to hear from God because God already told you. And that's another part of also being humble. We and, and, and uh, acknowledging, acknowledging other people's gifts. You see what I'm saying? You won't benefit from another believer in any way if you don't believe who they are in Christ. Just like you benefited from Christ by believing who he is. It's the same thing. Because at the same time, Jesus came from the word of God and had spiritual gifts and had a calling from the father. Right. And if you didn't, if you don't, whoever don't believe who he is, they suffer the consequences. Same way, whoever don't believe sent you. Because the same God that sent Jesus is the same God that sent you. And the same Holy Spirit that gave Jesus power is the same Holy Spirit that gave you your power to, to do your calling. And if people don't accept you for who you are, they won't benefit. That's why the Bible says a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Right? Uh, verse 11. Uh, oh, 10. 10. I'm still on 10. It says this. Still another person. Yeah, I'm still here. Still another person is given the ability to speak in unknown languages. Right? While another is given the ability to interpret what is being said so we have spiritual tongues and we have somebody who interprets right it is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts he alone decides which gift each person should have so when i was saying that the father got nothing to do with these gifts and jesus got nothing to do with these gifts mm -hmm. i'm backing it up by the word of god yeah. you see what i'm saying that's why i say i like to show you guys why it's vital to know who God is in his, in his fullness, not just, oh, I need to take it to Jesus, take it to Jesus. Jesus might be trying to teach you about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And we also got to think about this. Jesus said, you could speak blasphemous words against me and you can speak it against the father. Yeah. But if you speak blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, it won't be forgiven in this life or in the life to come. Yeah. So how much more do you need to know and understand the Holy Spirit and how important is the Holy Spirit? Because he also says in another place that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. Mm -hmm. So if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you and he says, don't grieve the Holy Spirit by your sinning because every other sin you do is, is, is against the body. But when you send a, a when you send in your, body, in your body, you're grieving the Holy Spirit. So how much more is that grief? Because the Holy Spirit lives in you and he could fill he could feel when you're crying. He could feel when you're sad. He could feel when you don't understand things. He could feel all these things, and he he he, he can feel your sin. You see what I'm saying? So we gotta understand that when we keep saying, "Oh yeah," but even when I sin, God will have compassion to so much time. You see what I'm saying? Because when that when that trumpet sounds, mm. it don't matter. Right. It don't matter. It don't matter where you was lacking. It don't matter if you're not prepared. When that trumpet sounds, you will be left behind. You see what I'm saying? And you got to take the harder route. So if you couldn't, this is the easy route right now. So if we can't handle the easy route, you see what I'm saying? How is it going to be when they're going to behead you for your faith? Mm. You see what I'm saying? Which they doing now. And some, yeah, some Christians is going through that now. Like we should, we should be happy and be grateful for what we have now, because when that trumpet sounds, nothing's going to matter. Uh, God was showing me that even even when he come, God was showing me that even when he after he come. People who who's left behind is going to be arguing why they was left behind. Yeah. 
They're going to be more mad at God as if God did something bad or he made a mistake. You see what I'm saying? But we, we have to acknowledge everything that Jesus does. Hold on. I'm sorry. So uh, verse 12, the human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one whole body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But we have all been baptized into the one body by one spirit, right? And we all share the same spirit. So the same spirit that live in you guys live in me. Mm -hmm. I don't. I'm not more important than you, according to God. Um, I'm not more valuable or favorited. You know what I'm saying? We all. We just have different callings, according to what God sees in us. You see what I'm saying? We have different gifts according to what the Holy Spirit and his infinite wisdom decided to distribute. Y'all understand? Yeah. So, uh, let me also give you all one more scripture about uh, when Jesus, because it's. I, I want to show y'all proof. Uh, Philippians, all right, Philippians 2 6. I'm gonna go to it in the scriptures. So, I'm showing you guys the proof of everything, and I'm not just talking, I don't just want to talk. And remember, before we all leave today, I just want to like say, like the value like when i was saying who puts the stamp on the things you put value to you see what i'm saying because like i could explain it more like I, I just started doing nfts and i'm seeing like pictures going up for a hundred thousand i'm like who's who's putting these values on these things you see what i'm saying and you it's like people if i feel like it's worth that much i'm gonna pay for it i'm putting my own value you see what i'm saying so we got to understand when we're looking at god god put his own stamp you see what I'm saying? We, we got to say, that. well, when Jesus walked, he says, the father backs me up, basically. The, pa the father put, I'm, I'm not coming in my own name. The father put a stamp on me. You see what I'm saying? If, if it's not true, then how am I doing all these gifts? How am I raising the dead? How am I giving sight to the blind? How am I doing all these things? You see what I'm saying? So you got to understand at, that, that, if you want to prove that God put the stamp on you and that you you want to prove to yourself that 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 you believe the 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 glory of God and his fullness let your life show it let your light that's why that's why he says let your light shine don't keep it hidden in a basket you see what I'm saying like there was a time where I just like staying in the house I didn't I would read the word of God and I never want to go outside and 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 I heard God say, "Listen, you have to go evangelize. This is what I called you to do. It's time." And I would say, "Nah, I'm scared. I'm this. I was keeping my light hidden." And then she came from a message. She didn't even know. My wife didn't even know, like what I was going through mentally. You see what I'm saying? Like, like I didn't. I, I knew the word. I knew people needed it, but I wanted to stay in the house. I didn't want to. And then she came from somebody else. Uh, another pastor who had a spiritual gift and said, listen, God gave him a message. He said, listen, God said, you so filled up with the word. It's time for you to step out. And I'm like, oh, shoot. You see what I'm saying? And she didn't know nothing that God was telling me. He didn't know. So it's that spiritual gift. And I listened to that and I went out and I started evangelizing. I started preaching. I started doing all these things. Everything fell in place because I listened. You see what I'm saying? I didn't keep the light hidden. So, uh, what I was going to read. Uh, two, six. Uh, two, six. All right. It says, chapter two. yeah, chapter two. So you all can see the screen still, right? Yeah. yeah. All right. I, I, want, I don't want to keep you guys too much. Right all right. There you go. Uh, boom. I want to start from verse three. Uh, don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Why? 
because you all are the same. We all are the same. We don't need to impress somebody with our spiritual gifts, what we think we know or anything like that. We don't have to try to impress people. We need to just be. You see what I'm saying? We need to just be who we are. Right? When we being who we are, we automatically fall into being humble. You see what I'm saying? Like God, God don't want you to try not to be humble. He just wants you to be who you are and you will fall into the category of being humble. Right? Uh, so he goes on to say, be humble. Think of others as better than yourselves. Now that's a task. Right? Don't look out only for your own interests, but take an interest in others too. You must have the same attitude that Jesus Christ, that Christ Jesus had. Though he was God, he did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges, privileges. The word of God had privileges, right? Gave up his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave and was born as a human being. When he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, God elevated him to the place of higher, highest honor and gave him the name above all other names. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue declare that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Shine brightly for Christ. That's it. So that's as far as I'm going to read. So y'all understand more. So now in this, it identified the father. It identified the position that the word of God took, right? When he humbled himself and it says that he was God and didn't think of equality to God as something to cling to. He didn't think he was above everybody. He looked at, he came serving looking at other people as better than themselves than himself mm. right he humbled himself obedience to god and died a criminal's death on a cross so jesus was innocent and died like a criminal mm. can we be innocent and still be cool when other people talk bad about us i had trouble with that too you know what i mean so <laughs> i had a lot of trouble with that because you always want to prove yourself but what does it say in the beginning Don't try to impress others. Yep. You don't yep. gotta prove yourself. You gotta just live and let God prove who you are. You see what I'm saying? And don't let anybody condemn you. Like even if you're a Christian and say, let's just say you do, you do slip and fall. Nobody should be saying you going to hell. They should be trying to help you. Their spiritual gift that God, the Holy Spirit, gave them should be using their Holy Spirit to either give you a warning message to. These warning messages make you take it more seriously. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? They should be giving you a warning message to help you, spiritual gift to help you. These are all things to help you rather than tear you down and just say, oh, you're going to hell. Oh, I don't want to chill with you. I don't want to hang with you because you this, you're doing that. No. Remember, Jesus sat with sinners mm -hmm. because his spiritual gift outshined their wrong living. Yeah. Right? Light always shines in darkness no matter what. So, died a criminal's death on the cross God elevated him to a place of highest honor so when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and was said all right this is why I say I'm gonna give proof of everything I'm saying so when Jesus was in the wilderness and the devil saying all right I'll give you all the kingdoms of the earth that's just the earth Jesus listen I'm gonna beat this and I'm gonna get something better I'm gonna get something better I'm gonna get the highest name right I, I'm, I'm going to be all, all, all other names, right? Every knee is going to bow to my name mm -hmm. in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, meaning hell, mm -hmm. right? And every tongue will declare that I'm Lord. So the devil tried to get Jesus to work for him, but now the devil's working for Jesus and got to declare that he is Lord. 
without even bowing down. So are we going to bow down or are we going to be like Jesus? That's the biggest question, right? Shine brightly for Christ. That's what he left off with in verse 11. Shine brightly for Christ. Right. So, 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 so I'm hopeful everybody understands what God, who God is. And I want to share with you guys what God once told me. He said, how do you know who you are if you don't know who I am? And how can you have my ways if you don't know my ways? God told me that. So, and what that drove me to is to read. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit's job is to bring to remembrance the things he told you. Mm -hmm. The word of God is full of things that he tell you. So when you are in trouble or when something in your life is not going right, the Holy Spirit will bring scripture to your head. Just like when Jesus went into the wilderness and was tempted by the devil, he used scripture. He remembered scripture. That was the Holy Spirit's job activating well you see what i'm saying y'all understand where i'm coming from so if if we want to if we want that 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 to activate bring a remembrance to us and we have that confidence we have to read the word of god and i guess this is the start of, it, of us reading and understanding mm -hmm. so, and yeah any questions, any questions anybody no. bella any questions kayla no, she, no, she, no, you explain everything good. Okay. No. Well, it, well, I think it's starting off really good because this is the first Sunday of the month. Uh -huh. And so, you know, the community in the first, you know, the first Sunday of the month. So I think this was the communion button. So you do, you're doing this every Sunday? <laughs> yeah, that, that's a good question. I mean, listen, I would love to. Yeah. I would love to. You should. I told Felicia you should. I told her a couple weeks ago. I asked her, where you going to do it? I mean, do y'all feel like y'all learned something y'all ain't learned before? I did. Mm -hmm. I did. I definitely did. I learned too. Yeah. Me and Tay, I mean, like, Jesus me and Tay always talked about scripture, so mm -hmm. it's like, I don't know if I told him everything, uh, you see what I'm saying? Because <laughs> we got to work all day. <laughs> like, eight hours, I'll be talking straight. Right. I said, Prayer. Okay. Go ahead. You pray. Or somebody else want to pray? Anybody else want to pray? Go ahead, Jerry. You to somebody else. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. Go ahead, baby. I'll pray next, week. I'll pray next weekend. Okay. Uh, All right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this word. Thank you for all the people that came to join uh, this live. And thank you for allowing us to have communion with each other, Heavenly Father. And we just thank you for just, just showing us, you know, more and more of your glory and, and establishing us even so we can do this. For touching Tanya to even reach out to Felicia and everything so we can truly start doing this, Lord God. And we pray that you encourage us even more to continue doing this and give us strength and uh the, the the will to want to do it lord god to do it with happiness and not grudgingly lord god so that we all can come into union together to learn who you are and in every way lord god be the light to the people who need it 
Heavenly Father, thank you for everything, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 Amen.